Greetings and blessings to you. We are doing part two of the message that we started, how there is creative power in God's Word. There is amazing creative power in the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring your Word to your people. To tell them that your words will come to pass if they believe it. Your words are your promises. Your graces are revealed through the messages you've already given us, written in the pages of the Bible, ready to come out and fill our lives, our world, and everything around us. Lord, I pray, may they hear and take this word to heart and see the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, last week we were talking about how God's word comes out and will never return to him void. We also read how we were born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We also read that the devil comes to steal the word, persecution and trouble he sends your way for you to question God's word. And isn't it true that the devil will always make you think, well, did God really mean what he said? Yes. <laughs> yes, he meant. He, you know what he was telling uh, Eve? Do you really think God is uh, telling you not to eat that you will die? You're not going to die. He always wants you to question what God said. But remember, what God said is truth. You must learn that. You know, many people say, when God says you cannot marry an unbeliever, they'll say, well, but I, I love an unbeliever. Okay, but God says you can't. How can two light and darkness come together and get married? How can there be a, a, a communion with somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus and somebody who believes in Jesus just because you want to show somebody and go to church and just get blessed? and get, No, no, no. It doesn't happen that way. You've got to believe in your heart first. Or if not, leave, postpone your marriage and wait till that person gets saved and comes to true knowledge of Jesus. Amen. All right, coming back to the to the truth of the word. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew. Now, we're going to see some powerful truths in the book of Matthew about the creative nature of God's word. Now, it says here in the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 5, and let's read some scripture today. Now, when Jesus had uh, entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed uh, and, and dreadfully tormented. He was paralyzed, but in great pain. Now, the centurion probably was not a saved man, but his uh, servant who was a Jew was, and he knew that Jesus was ministering to the Jewish people. So he came seeking this favor, not for himself, but for his Jewish servant. And Jesus uh, uh, was told by, uh, I believe there's another scripture where he says they, they recommended to Jesus go and pray for this servant because he was a very good man who was a very who was to support the Jewish people and, and look after their affairs well. And so Jesus says and said to him, I will come and I will heal him. He's a Jew. And then Jesus says to this, uh, and the centurion says to Jesus and address and said, Lord, I don't know, master, I am not worthy and it doesn't look good that you should come under my roof or my home. But only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority and I, and I have soldiers under me and I say to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to another do this and he does that. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The people of covenant, they don't even believe God's word, which God sent. And here is a man, complete unbeliever, complete uh, outside of the covenants of God. And he comes and says, I believe in the power of word because he came to know that uh, before somebody does something, when you have the commanding or creative power or word of authority that you speak, it will be done. So there must be authority or power behind the word that you speak. Our word speaking or when God speaks, God speaks on authority of who he is, on the authority of his throne. When he says something, he knows it has going to come to pass. He knows he has the power to change the weather patterns. He knows he has the power to create things in your body and in your life that was once destroyed. He knows how to give you a child who are believing for a child that for so many years and so many ways you couldn't have a child. Only God can recreate your womb and give you a child. If for Somebody in life who has lost something, God can make up those losses for you. Only he can because he has the power to do so. 
Okay, that's why there is not only the power of God to give a promise, but he also has the power to fulfill the promise he gave. Amen. So think about it. If you would believe God today, you can be assured that he has the power to make his word good in your life. Amen. Okay, let's go on. So here is this man at home and Jesus said, okay, you, I've never seen such faith. You don't even want me to come and you saying." Heal, send a word and be healed. Because when Jesus would have eventually gone to the house, he would have just laid his hand or probably just spoken a word and said, be healed. Now, for him to say the word be healed there or to say it from yonder where he was and say, okay, be healed. He knew that whatever Jesus said, he was backed by God who, was, who had anointed him and that anointed word had the power because there was somebody believing. So God can give a word and if there is faith in the middle, it's going to come to pass. Amen. See, faith moves the hand of God to do what he said he will do. See, God has given all the promises by his grace. You can't walk out to get one promises in your life. But listen to this. All the graces and favor of God, all the blessings of God can be yours today. If you would believe the word God said, if you would believe it by acting it out and receiving it and rejoicing. Now, let me give you a simple example where when God says give. Well, I'm not going to give. I don't believe in giving. These pastors are just after my money. Then keep your money with yourself and you will never see the blessing that God said that giver gets. You know, it's not just giving to the church. You which which I believe tithes and often go to the church, but just being a liberal person when there is a genuine need and you had the power to do good and you don't want to do it because you, you're you just thinking, I don't, I don't like giving to people anyway. No, a liberal person, Bible says, is always blessed. Go to the book of Proverbs and see the blessings and the, just the law of God operating that he has put there on those who are righteous and good. And I tell you, when you start doing those things, you will see the benefits and the blessing that follow on those who do God's word. Okay. So he says, just send the word. My servant shall be healed because I know not only do you have the word, you can back the word because God is backing you. Let me tell you, when you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. It's not your words. It's the words God said. Now, when you say those words to your body, now when you say that words on the sick, when you lay hands and say, well, I'm laying my hands on you based on what Jesus said, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm, not, I'm telling you, you will get well. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Have faith in that word. And I tell you what, that person will be healed, not because you said it, but because you have been empowered and there's authority higher than you, whose authority you are commissioned to go out and lay hands and pray. And I tell you, even in prayer, when you are praying for your loved one, praying for the unsaved, praying for your nations, praying for the, all the family members, your marriages, your life, your finances. When you pray in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, when you pray, the Bible says, whatever you ask in the Father, according to my will, my purpose and my word, it will come to pass. If you have the word of God, if you are backed by the promise of God, God's backing you. His promise with his throne. He will not be ever proven a liar. Amen. Praise God. I love that. I love that. You know why? Because I know one thing. If I have God's promises, I'm a winner. Amen. So what happens here? Uh, uh, we can read here in verse 13. It says, Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way as you have believed, as you have believed on the word, so let it be done. And the servant was healed the same hour. The word works. You don't need a man of God to come lay hands on you. If you have faith, uh, uh, and just take the word of God and say, Lord, I believe I received. You said 2,000 years ago. And even, Lord God, when you were here on earth, you went about doing good and healing. You are still healing. You are the Jesus that changes not. Amen. If you can believe, I tell you, miracles will happen. In the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms 107, Psalms 107, verse 20. Let me get there now. Psalms 107, verse 20. I know some of you know this. It says here, uh, but before we read Psalms 107, verse 20, when you read verse 19, he says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. What did they do? They cried out to the Lord, Lord, uh, just remember how you have had mercy on us. Remember the promises you gave us. So when they cried out to God, because they knew only God could do, help them. And the Bible says he sent his word. Whenever they needed help in their distress, what did God send? His word. 
He gave his widow promise. He said, I will save you. And they went, all right, let's, uh, I believe God will save us. And when they believed that, they were saved. When, when they would go to battle and they cried out to God, Lord, will we win? And God would give a report by the prophet and they said, go. And sometimes don't go. But if they did go, they'd lose because God said, don't go. <laughs> and when they were supposed to go and they did not go, I, I, I mean, if they went and, 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 and God said, don't go, then they would still lose. So there is only protection when you are doing what God said for you to do. You'd get into a lot of trouble, heaps of trouble, which you don't want to do because God knows the future. He knows what is right for us. And many times when things are not happening right, don't blame God. Just know I'm, I missed it. Lord, I repent. I repent. It's not your fault, Father. I know my, I'm, I'm probably not where I'm supposed to be. So when the people call out in their distress, what did God send to get rid of their distress and their trouble? He sent his word and the Bible said, and he healed them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And how will God heal you today? He gave his word. He, he promised that if you would believe my son, if you would take communion and trust it, if you would claim the promises of what I've given you and believe it. And, and you say, will I get it then? Probably yes and probably not. And But did, do you stop saying that? No. If you believed it, you keep thanking God every day. You get up, Father, I thank you. I, I, I have a brand new pair of kidneys. Father, I thank you. My heart beats in the rhythm of life. Father, I thank you. I have 20 vision. Father, I thank you. My hearing is restored. Father, I thank you that my heart beats in the rhythm of life. There is no sickness, no blockage in my body. I will do what is right by my body. I will not abuse my body. I will not put death food in my body. I will put life in it. And I tell you, when you start doing these things and speaking God's word, you will see the word come to pass. Sometimes there is a test also, child of God. When you say this by faith, you have to prove it whether you believe it or not. Sometimes things will get worse, but you still believe God's word. Do you still believe the promise will come to pass? Yes. You know, Abraham, God said you will have a child, but there was no way it was, it seemed that he would have a child. Uh, the contrary circumstances were higher than what he was going through. But you know what? God's word, when he trusted God's word above all he was going through, Bible says he considered not the, the, his important body, you know, the, the brightness of Sarah's womb. What happened? But started giving praise to God and he did come out victorious and have a child. Amen. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 3, how do we see God's creative power in war? God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and darkness was on the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God was brooding over the water. And God said, let there be light. Before light was, there was the Word of God. And there was God's faith speaking it. Let me tell you, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, I have to read this for you. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. It's some, some amazing truth is, is revealed here that I want you to see. It says, by faith. How? By faith. We understand. What do we understand? That the word of, uh, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things that are seen today were not made with the things that are seen or made visible. What he's saying? There was no earth. But what made the earth? How do we understand the, how, how the, the, for everything there must have been a, a starting matter? And what was that? Bible says, you, you see, everything has to be like most people say, well, there was this, 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 and this came to pass. But then when you say, well, how did that original matter come? Then nobody knows because then you say, who made that matter? So it can continue to go. The same thing people say, well, if there was God, then who made God? Amazing. There's some things about God in infinity our tiny peanut brain can't understand. But let me tell you one thing. How do you believe that God made this world? How do you do that? The Bible says by faith we understand that the worlds were created by God. So we know how did the God create and frame the world? By the word. It says there, for we believe by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of of God. How was the world framed? How did the tree come into life? How did the fish come into the waters? How did man come into being? How did God create the moon, sun, stars and everything there is on earth? Everything was created by the word of God. Hallelujah. If God's word could create the universe, today God's word through our mouth will preserve the universe. You know why it's dying? Because men are saying it's dying. We know why there is things not working for us because men are not agreeing with God. They, 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 you know, men have creative power in their words. You can have what you say and you are probably having what you are saying and it's full of nothing good in your life. Then you better start repenting and saying, Lord, did 
my life is full of all rubbish probably. It's full of darkness. I need to get myself out of it. How do you get yourself out of it? By changing your words and start saying what God said. And you take all those promises, learn it, memorize it, and start saying to the thing. Jesus said, men shall not live by bread alone, by natural feeding. He didn't say don't eat food. He says for you to sustain your life, it's by the word of God. Because God's word will provide the food. Just like God's word created the food. Now, if you, I'm not saying don't work. I'm just saying if there was a situation that was beyond your ability to pay or do something, where would you run and go? Where would the children of Israel who were in the wilderness go for food and water? They had nowhere to go except trust God, the living God, the creator God, and that he will provide. It's probably in your life, there is nowhere to go today. There is, you've done your best, you're walking, but there's no, it feels like you're in a famine. Let me tell you something. Take God's promises. Start praising him. Say, Lord, I believe you've made a way. You will provide me water from the rock. That means impossible things will become possible. I know that there seems to be no food, where to sow, where to eat. This is a wilderness in my life right now. But God will give you heaven's food, heavenly manner. He will make the way where there seems to be the way. There's a good song sang by Don Moen a long time ago. God will make a way for you. Actually, God has made a way for you. His name is Jesus. Why don't you receive him today? Why don't you let him take away your sins? Why don't you say, Lord, I need Savior. I, 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 I need hope. Or if you are a believer and you're backslidden and you have no interest in the Bible, you don't even pray and you've been living just doing whatever you want to do, wasting your time and hours doing just feeding your flesh probably. But you can come back to Jesus. He's not against you. He's not angry with you. If you just come to him, your life will be changed. Amen. Praise God. I want to end by saying this, that the Bible says in John Chapter 1, verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were created by Him. In Him was life and light, and that life and light and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is He? Jesus. Who is going to be your life today? Who is the security for your soul after you die? Jesus. Yeshua. Mashiach. He is the Messiah. He came as a Messiah to save us from our sins. Sin is the biggest thing that will stop you from the blessing of God. Jesus forgives you and forgets you and gives you the right to be called the child of God. And if you are, and if you've been living right with God, you can say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Holy Spirit, I've been grieving you. You should not have. You know, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of our living God. Live a life that is pleasing to the master and you will see the power, the blessing. So learn the word of God. Put God's word in your mouth. And I'm telling you, the word of God in God's mouth is as powerful as God's word in your mouth. So speak it out. Create things in your life that are based on God's word. And I'm telling you, you will experience the blessing and I will experience the blessing because I'm putting this word to work for myself and it's working and it's going to work for you and together we will give praise to God. Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share the word. May your grace and blessing reside heavily and mightily upon each one. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with me and remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn more from God's word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page, Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries, to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram, JCLM Fiji. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLM Fiji, to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry. If you'd like to host Brother Brian for teaching and ministering at your church, or host a conference, you can contact our church office, 3315202.